up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Bookmark. I'm your host, is Sherry's Joy. I am half of the DigiCast, and I am very excited to do this show. I have been waiting to read this book for quite some time, and I am finally reading it! And today I am going to talk about 112263 by the awesome Stephen King. So, this is full on spoilers. This is not a book review. I am just talking about me reading the book and my experiences while reading this book. I am going to do this book in two, um, we'll do my bookmarked, um, in two parts. I did mention that in the previous shows. If you haven't listened to the previous shows, check them out. But I did mention in the previous show that I was going to possibly split this up into three parts because it's such a long book. But I think splitting it in two parts is pretty good. I mean, there is a lot going on in this book and I can do it in two parts. So I appreciate you listening. This is full on spoilers. So if you want to read this book and you don't want to be spoiled, I would suggest um, stopping this podcast and going and read the book and then joining me or listening to me um, discuss the book. So let's get started. All right, Um, the main characters when we first start the book, we are I guess um, we're reading uh, like an epilogue and it is um, with a teacher going over some um, essays. (laughs) I don't know why I'm so tongue tied right now. Going over essays and what we learn is that the teacher is Jake Epping and he is a high school ELA teacher and he also teaches GED and he is grading GED essays or you know essays that the students had to write so they could um, get their GED I guess this is like another step uh, part so we're reading and we're reading about a character named Harry who's been through such a traumatic um, experience with his father and it, it we don't really it doesn't really go into it but um we learn that there was like a, a murder in his family and then the book starts and we start with Jake Epping we're introduced to him again you know formally and we're also introduced to Harry Dunning formally so he's actually Harry is a janitor that works in Jake's high school and he just happened to you know take the GED classes so he passes and they go you know at graduation he and Jake meet up at graduation and Jay, uh, Harry is very very thankful and he you know expresses his thanks to Jake and everything we learn that Harry is actually old enough to be Jake's father which is weird and but Jake is like hey I'll treat you to let's go get some lunch so I'm gonna treat you to a a burger and shake or whatever so they go to the local diner and the diner is run by Al Templeton and that's when we meet Al Templeton and they're you know having the celebration lunch and Jake is like hey Al this is my friend Harry he was a student he just got his GED so Jake's like well that deserves a photo on the celebration on the celebrity wall so Jake takes or excuse me Al takes a picture of Jake and Harry and puts it you know for the celebration wall and I'm kind of like confused at this point I'm like is this the past is this the present what year is this but we do learn that it is um, 2011 so we are in 2011 at this point and after the celebration you know however time goes by uh, we are back in the school setting and this is part one actually I'm sorry this book has six parts So this part right here is part one. And I like how, again, you know, I apologize. I'm all over the place. It's just how I talk. So I like how this book has the different parts, part one, two, three, four, five, and six. And each part, it has chapters. And it's about three or four chapters, except for the last part. We'll get into that later. But each, so far, each chapter has... Um, I'm sorry, each part has about three to four chapters and each chapter has sub chapters that are short and I like that. Um, but it is a complete page turner anyway. It's a really good book. I'm reading it pretty quickly. So anyways, we're back at the um, story. <laughs> so we learn 
um, that Harry is a janitor in the school and that um, Jake works at and he has a bad leg. He's got like a limp and everything and the kids, ugh, kids are so horrible, even teenagers, oh my goodness, it's so immature. They call him hip, hip toed or hop toed Harry, I guess because he kind of like has a small hop when he walks and he's also, um, his motor skills, or not motor skills, but his, he's, um, he's a little bit on the slower side of things where he's, you know, he doesn't comprehend things a lot and he talks real slow and things like that. So, um, we're like not really understanding completely what's going on, but we kind of think that it has something to do with this murder that happened. So we're, we're just, you know, learning and we're meeting about what, about what happened with them. And then we really go into, um, his actual essay, the teacher, you know, he goes home Mr. Epping goes home and he's reading over the essays and we really learn about what happened to Harry. So Harry wrote about it in his essay when he was a kid. His father came over and he was really mad at his mom. Um, they were divorced and he was really mad at his mom and he came over just on a rampage with a axe or a hammer, actually a hammer, and he killed his mother his and all his you know his siblings and it was just an awful mess and then he tried to kill Harry but he just Harry was hiding under the bed with his rifle with his um toy rifle or maybe it wasn't a toy rifle but it was it's a rifle I guess because kids in the 50s right they had like real rifles <laughs> um he was hiding under the bed and he was hit in the head and his his brain got damaged so that's why he's you know he's a little bit on the slower side of things um with that and then also his leg was broken during all of that so he was the survivor of that and that's just a really traumatic horrible thing um so that's what happened to him and that's what he wrote about in his essay so you know the next scene where um we're with jake and he's in the school and he's grading his his normal you know his regular student high school student papers and he gets a phone call and it's al and al's like hey you know can you come over to the diner and um harry's like excuse me jake is like well i've got a lot of things going on and al's like no no you come over so he goes over to the diner and then al looks like extremely sick like really really sick something is going on he, you know, his hair is gray, he looks frail and fragile, he's coughing something awful, coughing out blood, it's really, really bad. And he did not look like this yesterday. So Jake is like, well, what is going on? So that's when Al tells Jake about, uh, he has terminal lung cancer. And we're like, well, how did this didn't just happen overnight? What's going on? So he's telling, he's really making Jake think, you know, he's really getting Jake to have an open mind about everything. He's like, you gotta swear you're gonna believe me if I tell you this is a doozy, but you gotta believe me. And he's like, yeah, sure, what's going on? So he tells him about his travel back into 1958 and how he was there for five years. And he was like, you can't just take my word for it you've got to see it for yourself so he takes them to the back of the diner where there's like the pantry where they keep you know like the dry goods and things like that and there's these stairs and he goes down the stairs and as he's going down the stairs the atmosphere changes and he realizes he's outside so you get down to the bottom step and you're outside in 1958 okay and it's just mind-blowing um there's a yellow card man is what they call him he's this guy that's there where you have to give him a coin or actually a dollar he wants a dollar in order to pass and you know he's like i don't have a dollar i have a 50 cent piece that i can give you um so he gives him that and then he passes and he walks around the town it's the same town they're in lisbon maine and he's walking around the town and just mind blown you know of everything that's going uh, around him it's just very very 50s so he makes his way to um a fruit stand kind of like a Woolworths type of place i'm guessing 
but it has they have like milkshakes and stuff and fountain drinks so he goes and he gets himself a root beer and he's talking about like the difference and the root beer back then and the root beer now and how it's so much better and he goes back in you know he goes back and he's he goes back to 2011 to al and al is like telling him everything he needs to know about the time travel and his ideas and he's to he wants to stop the kennedy assassination but he's too sick and fragile himself to do it and he was already in the past for five years and that's when he caught the lung well not caught but that's when he developed lung cancer and it just progressed over the five years that he was there even though he was only there for two minutes so the thing is is when you go you can stay for as long as you want but when you come back it's only been two minutes past you know two minutes time has passed um but i guess while you're there your body and you age your body ages you age even though in our time it's only been two minutes which is very very weird very very strange but then they talk about the butterfly effect of it all and the butterfly effect is in this book um which i think it's accurate in most cases in the cases of the butterfly effect so whatever you change back in the past is going to change now but in this book the difference is when you go to the past and you make the change you come back that change stays and all of the you know ripples in time are you know they stay but if you go back to the past, everything resets. So everything that you did when you traveled back then, or excuse me, everything you did when you traveled in your first trip, if you go to your second trip, you undo everything that you did. And so that's a little bit different. Um, so, but yeah, the owl really wants to stop the Kennedy assassination. And he's like telling Harry, excuse me, not Harry, he's telling Jake about all of his reasonings as to why and he has like this whole journal of things and information and you know he's got 50s money and didn't just he's given him all of you know you need to your clothes the first thing you need to do is change is buy some clothes you got to go to the bank you got to withdraw this money I set up a bank account for you he's given him like IDs that he's set up and everything and he's got him he's good to go he's got all of this thought out and planned he just can't implement it himself because he's too sick so Jake is like oh gosh I don't know this is crazy but what if I could change Harry's life you know because Al tells him about the story of um, this this woman who she was she was shot in fifty in fifty eight or fifty nine when fifty eight fifty nine she was she was out hunting with her dad and another man he was hunting as well and he missed his target and the bullet hit this girl Miss her name is. Um, Paul, her last name is Pollen, Carolyn Pollen is her name, and she gets shot in the leg, and she becomes paralyzed. So Al went back into the, you know, he went in, when he was in the past, he distracted the other hunter so that he wasn't out hunting that day, so that Miss Pollen wasn't even in that area, so she wasn't at, well, she was in the area, but she wasn't at risk for being shot and paralyzed. So he fixed that. You know, and she's not paralyzed and she's like a senator now and she's really, you know, on top of things. So Jake is like, well, ooh, I could go back and I can, you know, help Harry and his family because this, that story really touched him and it really disturbed him. So that's what he wants to do. He wants to go back and he wants to stop Harry's dad from murdering his whole family. So... Jake gets ready and he goes back to save Harry um, from her, from her being killed by his father. <clears throat> Not being killed, but from being hurt by his father and him killing his family. And when he goes there, it's September. So he has a conversation with the yellow card man and the conversation's a little weird, but it's clear that the yellow card man is a wino and he may also be aware of something weird's going on here but we kind of don't know what 
Um, but you know, he passes through to, so he passes through, he gives him the court, the half dollar and he passes through. So then Jake goes and the first thing he does is go back to the fruit store to get another root beer because he absolutely loves the root beer. And then he heads up to the Chevron um, gas station where they sell cars. So he goes there to use the restroom and then he looks at the cars and he finds this Ford Sunliner that he really likes and he's like, hmm, I'll come back. So he goes to get a haircut. He goes to the bank to withdraw like a thousand dollars. He goes to the thrift shop to buy a suitcase. Then he goes and he buys the car and he stays the night at the inn there in, Lis in Lisbon. And he, the next morning he's headed to where Harry is from. And that is none other than Derry, Maine. Um, and for those of you who don't know what Derry, Maine is, Derry, Maine is the town that it took place in. So he's on his way to Derry and when he gets there, something seems off about the place. It looks eerie and just water holy like and just weird. So he goes and he, um, he's driving around and he meets a bunch of like rude people and he goes to this like dive uh the first you know the first bar he sees is kind of like a dive and he meets this rude guy he calls no no suspenders and is like asking about the dunning family and the guy's like dunning you know this whole town has dunnings and i go get a go look in the phone book blah 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 he's like not helpful at all and he's just rude so he goes and he looks in a phone book and yeah there's like three or four pages of dunnings um, and he's just like, wow, how am I going to find anything? And he's walking around and he's looking around and he sees these kids, uh, this girl and this boy, they're practicing some swing dancing and he walks over to them and he's like, Hey, you know, how's it going? You know, I was just watching you. And he knows about swing dancing because him and his ex, they did a swing dancing thing at their wedding. Um, his, he's, he has an ex-wife she was an alcoholic and it really put a dent in their wedding or in their marriage and their divorce now but um he recognizes the swing song that's playing and he actually ends up helping the kids um with their practice he gives them some really good tips like slow the record down and then practice that way and you get your flips and everything on point and that's how you can really work so the kids um, give him some information about the Dunning family and where you can find the father and where the actual kids live because come to find out they're separated the mother and father are separated so the Dunning family is um, Frank is the dad Doris is the mom then they have the oldest son is Troy Ellen is the daughter Arth um, Arthur is his name but they call him I want to say Tugga and he's about 12 is T-U-G-G-A so I'm thinking Tugga um, if I'm incorrect it's Tugga, Tugga, let me know leave the comments below and then of course we have Harry so they um, they're just like you know be careful around here because the they're the, the town is all you know oh my god because the year before he finds out is when all the stuff from it was happening you know the kids being abducted by clowns and Georgie being taken into the sewer drain and things like that so yes this is more proof that the Stephen King world is his writing is all one world um so then Jake you know he's like okay thanks you know and all this and he wishes them luck and everything like that and they after they tell him where to find Frank Dunning the father he goes to a bar uptown uh, where you know where the people at the dive are like you'd be more comfortable going uptown and blah 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 so he goes uptown he actually changed his name well he's going by George Amberson and he's saying that he's there for real estate um, and so he's like talking to the townspeople and that's how he finds out that Frank was married before and had a kid and the mother and you know took the kid and split some years ago and just he's talking and he's just finding more out about the clown murders and just how weird Derry is and 
he learns that Frank is actually a butcher and people really do like him. He's very friendly and funny and he actually finds Frank and he follows him home to see where he lives and you know some time goes past and Jake is actually he stays there till about Halloween to kind of stop the murders from to not kind of stop the murders but to actually stop the murders from happening and he runs into no suspenders man and we find out no suspenders man his name is Bill Turcotti and the night before the night of Halloween all hell breaks loose and we're in part three of the first half of the book part three is well I'm sorry before part three we got to go into what happened <laughs> Halloween I'm sorry so Halloween you know he's going to stop Frank from doing all of this craziness to his family and he's like a half hour right before it's go time Takati comes and he stops him and Takati is like you're not gonna do this you're I've been you know and he's like why have you been following me because to, um Frank Dunning is mine he killed my sister and murdered my nephew or niece and um actually nephew and <laughs> Jake is like what so Takati goes into the story in 1938 his sister was married to Frank Dunning and his sister disappeared along with his uh, nephew Mikey. Mikey was a baby or like a toddler we don't really know how old I'm um, thinking baby or toddler age just from what I've read and so he swears up and down that Frank murdered his sister and nephew and that's why they're missing because it's been 20 years this is 1958 now it's been 20 years and him and his sister were really really close so she wouldn't just disappear without getting in touch with him somehow some way and she just hasn't so he thinks that they were murdered and he's been plotting on killing Frank Dunning for a long time for 20 years and he hasn't done it and he's like he's got a, a, a bayonet and a rifle a gun and he's well, he's got the gun that Jake has. Jake bought a gun back in Lisbon along with his clothes and stuff. So Turcati is just trying to stop him. And he's like, you know, I've got 10 minutes. What am I going to do? Then, you know, I got five minutes and all this other stuff. And meanwhile, Turcati is, he's smoking and he's having some sort of like a heart attack. It seems, you know, from the symptoms, like he's really, really gray. He's sweating. Sometimes he's stalling like he can't move. And then at one point he has to sit down. He like collapses and he's just completely out of it. And Jake is like, you don't look so well. You don't look so hot. And oh, I'm fine. And then he lights up a cigarette, heart racing and just craziness. Like he's about to just drop dead. And so Jake finally just he's like I got five minutes I gotta do something so he he is able to um you know knock Frank out by because he's just he passes out and he's done he's like I gotta go I gotta go so he he just runs from him um and he goes to try to stop things from happening because he hears the car coming so when he gets to the house he oh he goes through the back door and Frank is in the front door and he's like going crazy Frank does actually get to he doesn't get I'm not saying get to but he actually does strike the mother and she goes down and it's like a really brutal brutal murder that was explained in you know in the essay I mean the mother's brains were like splattered on the couch it was bad it was so bad but this didn't happen um when Jake tried to save so everything so the mother did get struck but she did not get killed he actually was able to save all the kids except for Tugga Tugga got slugged and slugged the slugged in the head and his head split wide open and his brain splattered everywhere and but everybody else was saved and he sneaks out the back he will he tells Harry um, Harry's like, who are you? And he tells Harry, I'm your guardian angel. Don't worry about me. You, you'll be good. And then he leaves and he escapes and we're into part three. So he makes it back to 2011 and he actually has a bad gash on his head because what happened was 
when he was getting ready to kill Frank, Tercotti comes and saves the day. Uh, because he, Tur uh, Frank had actually hit Al, not Al, had actually hit Jake on the head with the hammer. And it wasn't a regular hammer, it was a sludge hammer. Sludge hammer. And Tercotti, he just, he saves the day. He had the bayonet and he just put it right through Frank a couple of times. And he was like, this is for my sister and this is for my nephew. And then he collapses and Tercotti collapses as well. And we're to assume that he actually died from his heart attack or heart issue that he was having. Um, so back in 2011, he, with the bad head and the bad gas, Jake does make it back. And he you know he's with Al and Al's like you made it oh my god what happened to your head so Al's dressing his head Al is like coughing all over the place and he's not doing too hot but it's only been two minutes since he's been gone really he's been gone for two or three months two months two months um but he notices that the picture that Al took of he and Harry has been replaced by a congressman that Al has no idea or no recollection of taking the photo. He's like, I don't, I didn't vote for him, but he's on the wall, so I don't know. I don't know what happened. Um, and remember, he went down in, so the last, the last thing got reset. So Miss Pollen is actually still in a wheel, is back into a, a wheelchair. Um, and you know. Uh, the next day, Jake looks at the, at the, he goes through and he, he goes to the library and he finds the old newspapers. So they were actually looking for Jake, but only because they think that he was a missing person because there was blood in his car. Like he parked his car at Liz, Lisbon and he, and you know, it seemed like there was a crime scene and he went missing and everybody who was interviewed in the town was like, he was a nice man. And we really liked him and it's a shame what happened. I hope they find him. I hope he's okay. So that was the only thing that was about, you know, him. He was actually making sure that they didn't suspect him of murder. Um, but that was it. It was just that he was, uh, you know, his car was bloody and abandoned. So they were looking for him to make sure he was okay. Then he looks up the Dunnings and Derry and finds Ellen. Um, Ellen, sur you know, she was a survivor. Everybody survived except for Tugga, but she looks up Ellen he looks up Ellen to make sure that Ellen is going is doing okay and that everybody's actually doing okay. But Ellen is the only one that he finds in the phone book. And he calls and, you know, he pretends that he's like this old friend that they used to hang out with and play with. And she was like, yeah, you're not fooling me. I've been a radio DJ for 20 years and I know people. And you do not sound like you're, you know, you would have been Harry's age. That you, he does, bleh, sorry. You do not sound like you're Harry's age. You sound way younger than that. And then um, she she's, says that Harry died in Vietnam. Harry's dead. He died in Vietnam. And then she's like, you're him, aren't you? And Jake is like, him, what are you talking about? And Ellen's like, Harry always told me that a guardian angel saved our lives that day. And you must be him, aren't you? Jake doesn't deny it. Or he and he doesn't, um, accept, you know, he doesn't admit to it or deny it. He just is very <laughs> upset because Harry died in Vietnam. And Ellen starts crying. She's like, "You son of a, you sob! You didn't, you, you know, if you were such a guardian angel, you should have saved him from dying in Vietnam." She's like very angry. She goes through you know, all of the anger and then she cries and everything and the conversation just kind of ends. He hangs up because he's like distraught himself. So he wants to go back and he wants to fix it and do it right this time. So he goes back to Al's house and he finds a note, you know, uh, in the, uh, at Al's house, he finds a note and he goes, he sees Al and Al has some tears in his eyes. He's in bed and he left the note by his bed and there's a bunch of pills and he reads the note and Al in Al's note, he's like, you've got to get it done. You've got to get, you've got to go back. You've got to get Oswald. You've got to, you know, save Kennedy and make things right. And you've got to do it now because the diner will be sold tomorrow. Um, and that was that. So it's basically like a suicide note. You got to get things done and you got to do this now. 
type of thing. We don't have enough time. So Jake gets himself together and he goes back through the stairs into 1958 where he sees the yellow card man and the yellow card man is dead. He had a wine bottle in his hand and it was broken and it looked like he, you know, committed suicide. He sliced his, his neck with the glass from the bottle, which I think is, mm, I feel like there's something going on there, some kind of connection between the yellow card man and Al, because what a coincidence is that, like Al, you know, suicide by pills, but I get it, like the lung cancer, he was terminal and he just didn't want to be in pain anymore maybe um and now the yellow card man suicide you know I don't know if there's a connection but I'm kind of thinking there might be and so he's like all right well I gotta get the hell out of here <laughs> so he goes off to the town and the only thing he does is buy his car he buys the car again and he heads straight to Derry he Oh, and he buy, I think he buy, he buys his suitcase. I'm sorry. He buys the suitcase and he buys the car and he heads straight to Derry. And he gets to Derry. He uh, does everything all over again and he succeeds. He, he actually doesn't wait till Halloween. He goes straight to a cemetery and you're kind of like, why? And he waits in a mausoleum. And now, and then, you know, next chapter we find out, oh, okay, that's why he waited. So actually, so at one point, Frank visits his, his parents' grave and Harry, um, Jake was waiting for him and he kills him at his parents' grave and then he heads on out. And before he heads out of Derry, he actually goes to the dive to leave Turcotti a note with the bartender. And the bartender is like, what do you want with Turcotti? And he's like, I'm a friend. This is not bad. Just give him the note. And so we, he tells us what the note, what he wrote in the note. And the note is just giving him a warning about his heart and to see a, to see a doctor about it. Um, and that's kind of like, you know, that's what happens. So then he, he does a lot of betting and he wins like a ton of money and he starts to head south and he stops in North Carolina to use a bathroom and he saw a sign you know that said girls g-u-r-l-s and then guys g-u-y-s and then like a picket fence not a picket fence but like a, a wooden picket like um sign that says coloreds and he was very curious so he goes you know to see what that was all what that looked like and it was on this it was a path like a dirt path on the side of the building and um, there was no bathroom there was a brook and on the brook you know there was a at each bankment of the brook on either side there was like a plaque of wood so you go number two or if you have or excuse me you go number one and if you have to go number two you sit on the plank and you just poop right into the brook <sighs> that was a hard read that was a hard read and then I don't and then there might be like a third wall here in the book he was like so if you think that um you know my experience in the, in the 50s or is you know is all mayberry here here's you know this it's not <laughs> here's what's going on um just wow i was just wowed by that and i mean that has to be accurate right or that can't be like over exaggeration and i actually asked a couple of, of people who are old enough, you know, to remember the 60s and I was, you know, I was like, hey, this is what I read. Is this an over-exaggeration? And they were all like, no, I believe that this is probably a thing that's, you know, some in some places. Just wow. Good Lord. Ugh. Jeez. So he keeps on going. Um, he stops in Florida for a little while and he he rests there and he kind of stays put for a little bit he reads a sign that says hey you can get your bachelor's degree at oklahoma university by mail and here's how so 
he asked he writes back and he asks for the information and he just had to take a test <laughs> and the test it was so crazy he showed us like two questions the first the first question was um uh, I don't know they were just so I can't remember the exact questions I'm sorry but it was like just so like who wrote the national anthem you know or who who who's on a dollar bill type of questions and he answered all the questions and he mailed it in and they mailed him his bachelor's degree and he took that bachelor's degree to the local high school and he got himself a job teaching <laughs> and he's teaching there for a while and he does a lot of betting and he buys a house like on the lake and he stays there and he's doing some betting and he won like 10,000 in betting and the bookie was a little sketchy scary like and um connected and so he's like all right well i got my winning i'm gonna head out deuces and while he was there he was actually borrowing books from the library and stuff like that to pass the time so it's like deuces and he heads out and he heads down to louisiana and he goes to new orleans and he's looking for a place to stay <coughs> excuse me he finds a place to stay and then he finds the book um, that he had borrowed back in Florida and he calls the librarian there because they you know became kind of close and she's like oh hey yeah just send it just mail it to us and you know where are you you sound like you're long distance and he's like um, he says that he's in Louisiana but he says he's in Baton Rouge instead of New Orleans and she's like alright yeah just mail the book back to us and sorry to tell you but your house got burnt up <laughs> is it burnt down and he's like what happened so it sounds like somebody threw a molotov into the house to set the house on fire so he thinks that it's the bookie and all of that shadiness so he's like all right i'll mail you the book he mails the book and he leaves louisiana and heads on down to texas or heads on over to Texas and he goes to Dallas and he discovers that he doesn't like Dallas. Dallas is hot, there's a lot of racism, there's a lot of craziness and is dirty and he just does not like it at all. Um, he stays there for a little bit and then he finally, you know, he tried to find a place to rent. He was there for two weeks trying to look for a place to rent, didn't have any success. So he, you know, was like I can't I don't like it here so let me keep going so he goes about 20 minutes west and he uh, 20 minutes west from Dallas and he runs into like this little small farm town that he actually liked it seemed quaint he liked it and he found a place to live like right away and he actually um, landed himself a substitute job and he became really close to the principal and his fiance who happens to be the librarian and he really just became they all became friends and very likable and they offered him a job a permanent position because the English teacher there retired and he accepted a permanent position and sadly the um, librarian she passed she had leukemia so she died and she died uh, but not before you know they they had a nice couple month uh, relationship you know friendship and everything and she introduced him to Sadie and Sadie is a the new librarian who was taking over for the old librarian um, she set that up before she passed because she knew she was very very ill and didn't have much longer she introduced Jake to Sadie and Sadie is Jake's age she's really really tall too she's six feet and um, the librarian who passed she knows that something's going on with Jake um, Jake is writing a book it's called murders uh, town murders and it's about clown murders <laughs> of Derry and also she's like you're not who you say you are are you and Jake is like I'm not but I'm not gonna tell you who I am she's like I won't tell anybody I like you and that's kind of like it that was the first half of the book so we're kind of not kind of I keep saying kind of a lot moving on to uh, part two I'm gonna start that tonight I'm reading that tonight it's gonna be nice and stormy so I really appreciate you sticking 
to everything um, to listening to me I know this one was a little bit longer this is a lot longer of a book so I do appreciate you and I appreciate you following and liking and subscribing and hanging out with me you can find me I'm Sherry's Joy you can find me with the Digicast uh, we are on YouTube at the Digicast one we have a blog the digicast.substack.com we have a footboard. You can search for Digicast. We don't have much up there yet, but we are working on building content for you. Uh, we have Facebook, The Digicast. You can find us on Instagram, The Digicast, Spotify, The Digicast. And we have uh, an affiliate page for Amazon. So all of that information is in the description below. Again, I am Sherry's Joy, half of The Digicast. I appreciate you listening and please, 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 please feel free to leave your comments and concerns, any, you know, suggestions or any critiques or anything like that. I would appreciate it. Um, this is technically my second book, well, second episode. It's really not my second episode. Uh, this is the second book that I've discussed with Bookmark. I'm trying to figure out how to word that here. Um, but this is part one of 112263 of Bookmarked. Sherry's Joy, love the book.